Hello and welcome to all of you. Thank you for joining. As you know, we have three of us here to give you a different perspective about the Excel usage in finance. Joydeep, who is a very senior, a very respected CFO, in fact, he is on the jury of choosing the top 100 CFOs in the country. So very, very happy and honored to have him here. Then we have a Vijay who has been an Excel MVP for many years and he has himself, both of them actually are chartered accountants and they are subject matter experts. And I work across the office platform. One of that is Excel, Power BI and all the related stuff. So I will tell you some best practices. So over to you, Vijay. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. And I'm very excited, friends, to see all of you. And it's really a great platform. And I'm very uh, like privileged to have Joydeep, Dr. Nitin. Yes. So friends, I'm Vijay Garwal, like big data analyst and automation expert. So I'm running Champ Excel uh, brand name. So I'm having my YouTube channel. So we are in automation seminars, online courses. And I'm chartered accountant, company secretary with HR CA with 27 years experience and Microsoft gave me four times MVP award. So today I'm going to share with you like how like Excel is going to help us uh, to automate our like things like uh, to increase our like operational efficiency. So for that I'm going to uh, show you a quick demo uh, like later on. Uh, yeah, thank you Vijay. Thank you Vijay and thank you Doc for your kind, kind words. Well, I'm the kind of the odd one out because I'm not an Excel expert. I'm not an Excel guru. Uh, I'm not an MVP either. I just use Excel and the other Microsoft Office tools and of course a few other business intelligence automation tools in my company. Uh, so I've, I've led over the course of my career as an accountant. I've led large, um, large finance teams in the past. But over the last uh, 16 years that I have been with uh, my present company, which is Publicis Sapient, I have uh, concentrated most of my energies in the financial analytics space. So it is basically how do you make your company more efficient using the financial data that you find or even all, all the data that is floating around in the company. So that is essentially where I've concentrated my energies on in the last uh, decade and a half. And as you know, you know, there's been a sea change in in the business intelligence landscape, especially over the last 10 years where it's moved over from earlier. You, you know, you needed a lot of IT help today. You need you don't need so much of IT help in order to be able to do it. You there is a lot of you know, business intelligence and uh, and insight that you can derive with the existing tools that are available. You know, the you you go look up the the Gartner business intelligence uh, you know report that they publish the magic quadrant that they publish every year. You will get the names of all the companies that are there in that space, and you will get to know the leaders also in that space. So and those tools have really helped us, you know, in in over the last five, six, seven years to increase our business intelligence capabilities as as accountants. So. Um, I'm very excited and looking forward to the session with all every one of you. This is my but this is my first session where in in my lifetime where I am speaking with two very very senior Excel gurus, people who are you know uh, champions in the in the in the automation space. So I'm I'm very excited to be with all of you. Thank you very much, Doc. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Here we have an audacious goal to have three flavors in a single session, three components, three parties which are involved. So one is the boss who is the CFO or the management or people who demand stuff, reports, analytics from people. Then we have IT which provides the infrastructure to all of us and then the rest who actually struggle every day, every night, burn the midnight oil during month end, quarter end, closures and actually deliver the results. So all three have to work together and how that transformation can happen. It cannot happen in isolation. So whoever is demanding 
they will have to do something differently. Those who are supplying the information will have to do something differently and IT, which is the enabler for both of them, will have to do something differently. So this is the gist of what we are going to cover today. I'm not going to talk about each of these points right now separately, but as we go along, we will keep on covering this part. So let me tell you a good news and a bad news. Everything we do, not just using Excel, almost every software product is inefficient. Just understand that first. It's not that we want to be inefficient. It just happens to become inefficient over time, especially for feature rich products like Excel, which have been there for decades. We have been using it since school, college. The problem is nobody wants to be inefficient. We become inefficient over time. Why? Because maybe you learned it at day one somewhere down the line that time that was the best way of doing it but technology evolves and due to day-to-day -day pressures of business we have not kept pace with it we may have upgraded excel but we have not looked at what's new all the time what's old is still working so we have a false sense of adequacy and that is what leads to inefficiency two types of inefficiency operational and analytical so let's start with operational inefficiency. I'm going to show you some best practices which you can work with immediately. And this is ideally not even specific to finance as a team. It can be applied to anybody who uses Excel. So they are fairly generic, but extremely powerful and immediately usable. So as I said, efficiency is the default. It looks like a bad news. No, this is a good news and this is a good news for IT. It's a good news for CFO and it's good news for you who wants to grow in their career. Why? Because if you did not know you are inefficient, that's a problem. Now I'm telling you you are inefficient. We are never met. Still, I know why because that's the norm. What is the good news about it? When you know something, you notice the problem, you're going to act on it. So I'm giving you an impetus, initial boost by telling you what to do instantly. But before we go there, let me tell you the difference because work is getting done. Remember, as long as work is getting done, nobody's checking how you're working. So why should I bother? That's a very valid question. And maybe at, at whether you're a senior, junior, IT doesn't matter. You know at heart, maybe there is some inefficiency, but our perception of the proportion of inefficiency is absolutely haywire. Most of us think, how much difference will it make? 5%, 10%? No. So let me give you some real results. This is like a audit we do. This is audit typically is fault finding and people are scared of it. The kind of audit we do is empowering. We look at what you do. Look at the input, look at the output, look at the process, which is invariably inefficient, nothing to check. But then using the same tools, the same platform, using the right features, the same process gets completely transformed. So this is from a bank. I can't tell you the name because we are under NDA, but uh, look at what is happening. 24 hours of work is now happening in 15 minutes, and this is not one person benefiting. This budgeting consolidation was happening in every branch of that bank and there were 2000 branches. So now if you convert those three days of time saving into monetary value, this is huge balance sheet impact. And all this was done without writing a single line of code. That is the potential thousands of percent of improvement and that part we don't know. And because we don't know that we are not taking proactive steps. But now that I have shown you the potential, the next question you will ask me is what should I do individually or at organizational level to make this happen and everyone benefit from this? So steps, three steps. First step, I know I told you everything is inefficient. Still, you have to find specifically where it is and then act on it. So detect inefficiency, find the best way. But who is going to do that? Some person who is going to do that? Some person, but even this person benefits. Everyone else who is inefficient should also benefit. And that can only happen by not having pockets of excellence. But whatever is the desired way, best practice should become a SOP, standard operating procedure. We do that all the time for all business processes except office and especially Excel. So that's what we have to do. How do you detect inefficiency? Now there are so many. There are so many. 
there are so many different ways in which everyone uses excel but still i'll give you three generic ways of self audit whenever you are working on excel word powerpoint you have to think whatever am i doing is it repetitive and repetition which does not add value to you or to the company or to the customer is called inefficient now you may think yes i am doing it repetitively everyone else around is doing me repetitively so maybe there is no better way but trust me microsoft has added 12000 features in office exactly to take care of every possible repetition you can think of so you don't know your needs microsoft knows your needs better than you do and once you have that thought process notice the repetition there will be a better way another very important thing you have to understand is who is helping whom now all of you have purchased office of course and we have uh, excel now what happens is when we are working on excel adding the data is my job but then the job doesn't end there everyone has to manually go and change range formulas ranges in charts ranges in pivot tables we quietly do that every day people get paid for that but do you really think that is your job no you should be able to put your foot down and say sorry that's excel job i purchased excel excel did not purchase me so why should i help excel that is the important part of thought process so how do you make excel do that the most important revolutionary thing which happened in 2007 is table so insert table and then excel will do excel job notice both change this requires a refresh of course the top side on the right side as well as bottom are now sensitive so now excel is helping you so useless repetition is bad you helping the product is bad and obviously there is one more thing called hands or brain very often we don't realize that we are wasting our life doing things like this oh i am going to copy this formula by dragging really you are getting salary to drag i understand but really we were born to drag 5000 rows 50000 rows doesn't matter stop put your foot down say hands being used what is brain doing nothing so imbalance between hands and brain is called inefficient don't even think of double click because that's even more dangerous and even if you find that gap you bridge the gap and then you double click 20 times it's still repetitive it's still hands no brain so again make a table here table will auto copy formulas so every action can be improved that's the idea and what are the simplistic ways of detecting it useless repetition who is helping whom hands or brain now one simple thing we should start to optimize our work excel should be used in dark mode you must have noticed what i just showed you too much of white color creates eye strain so go to file options and change this from white which is default to dark mode if you are from it do it across the organization using group policy everyone in the company will thank you for that another very very old feature which people get irritated with and they have learned to ignore it now is the green marks green marks are extremely dangerous when we see green marks two things happen in our mind either we ignore it at mind level itself or we explicitly go there and say ignore both of which are bad you have to think what is it trying to show and then decide whether to ignore so in this case the total revenue should include this so in this case i should actually go and say update and in this case i want jfm total so it should not include april and so that's why in this case i should say ignore this is a discretion this is not a global thing in fact because it's a discretion if i multi select it disables it and then we get further irritated saying this is stupid it is forcing me to go sell by sell but that's in your interest so what is the important thing about green mark if you don't see green mark like this person who has put a formula but not put the data this person doesn't know new data was added this person thinks the total revenue is 40 takes a decision that decision is wrong because the data is wrong don't trust excel if there is a green mark that's called operational risk so what is the standard operating procedure for green marks for existing file 
open the file don't trust anything you have to manually go one cell at a time find every green mark handle it once you see this how do you handle it by the way formulas error checking one by one it will take you go through that process no shortcuts no macro nothing this is a discretionary so you have to do it manually only when all of them are handled you should see this dialog who should do it that you decide but if you are the boss you need not do it but as a boss click on this button anyway the moment you click on this button and you find this sorry send the file back saying tomorrow onwards no green marks that eliminates operational risk so what do we do as soon as you open the file handle the green marks but then we want more data to be added more green marks not to come so convert it to table that's the benefit of table will automatically table will automatically manage dependence and then do your work that's why i'm saying tables are mandatory any of us have a false sense that when you add tables the file size grows or performance goes down no it does not and tables are very very essential the next thing is we spend a lot of time in cleaning up data i agree but there are two aspects to it what exactly is clean data that itself we don't know so i'm going to show you some best practices for clean data exactly what is clean data cannot be person dependent it has to be defined in a person independent manner and that has never happened so same data give to three people they clean it up their clean data doesn't match that defeats the purpose we should have a clear cut definition of what is clean data so it's a checklist of few items 10 items to be precise i will show you the checklist and then i'll tell you how to clean the data as well so when we say clean data what does it mean raw data i'm talking about input data not output data so when the data comes in you have to look at these i know there are 11 and i have shown 10 i will tell you about the 11th so you have to look at each column and check one okay two okay like that all 10 okay then you are good to go we may not be able to discuss in detail exactly what it means i will give you links to what this means and how to handle it but this is uniform clean data assuming the data has been cleaned then you make a table immediately and once you have clean data that still doesn't mean it will remain clean why am i saying that because many times you get data from multiple locations multiple companies multiple products multiple regions maybe all of them are clean but then you keep them separate that is a problem so what is the 11th rule once the data is clean if related data comes in pieces don't retain it in pieces merge it together and whatever is the name of the piece whether it is product re region company name put that as a column remember anything you put as a file name or sheet name cannot be analyzed if anything has to be analyzed it needs a column remember that so all of us know the process but this is something we have never tried to standardize and that's what i am aiming to do here now i showed you what is good what is bad now suppose you say something is wrong how do you clean it again we spend too much time on cleaning some of them do it manually some of them have written macros some of them use third party products a very mixed combination but whatever you are doing for data clean up please review it because there is a very very powerful tool now available called power query where is power query depends on the version of excel you have if you have earlier versions of excel you have to install power query add in if you have a later version of excel you will see power query in data get and transform so go to your data tab if you see get external data that means you have older version if you see get and transform that means we have newer version power query every kind of data cleanup you are doing must be revisited because there has to be a better way of doing it using power query 
you may be using other bi tools like tableau clickview sas sap business objects none of them have an equivalent of power query all of them have cleanup mechanisms but that requires scripting power query is the only one which integrates with excel beautifully and imports data from all kinds of places we won't see detailed demo of this but let me give you four common situations very often we have data in a folder multiple files lying there they could be csv they could be excel whatever their columns are same data type is same and trust me people are wasting their life copying and pasting data one by one that too every month every week every quarter that can happen with few clicks just with power query another common thing we get lot of say dumps from banks or other institutions or various places in pdf format copy pasting tabular data from pdf to excel never works properly wasting time that probably to my knowledge Power Query is the only place where PDF is a valid data source. Of course, it can be a scanned PDF because scan means picture, but if it's a PDF proper, you can import data in Excel. Another important thing, which is large and slow Excel files, I will explain that in the next upcoming slides. One more very common thing, we have line of business applications. We run the report, that report comes on browser, and then we copy paste from browser. Any copy paste from browser can be done brilliantly by using the URL, give the URL to Power Query, and then it works beautifully. Where does data come from? Oh, Power Query can get data from 200 plus data sources, including many which are non Microsoft. SAP is included, Adobe is included, Salesforce, Google, all kinds of things are included. So, and all this is free. Remember, you're not paying anything for Microsoft. And if you have Power BI, which I will explain later, the important cleanup part is exactly the same in Excel and Power BI. So once you start using Power Query in Excel, you're already learning half of Power BI, which is a good thing. So another important thing now, all the Excel files are complex. We have no clue who created them, which file is linked to which file, and it's a mess. Nobody wants to revisit the mess because as long as it is working, nobody wants to take the blame if something goes wrong. It is undocumented. The person who created it has left, so links are a very dangerous thing. Once you have links, you have no idea how many links are linked to the local drive of the person who created. Some links may have gone to SharePoint, that means you moved the file to SharePoint or OneDrive or Teams, but the link is still pointing to a local drive. All kinds of chaos is happening as we speak. So very important best practice. As soon as you open a file, don't trust anything. Go to the edit links dialog, select all and say check status. Wherever the status is wrong, you have to figure it out. And even if status comes OK, you have to make sure is it the intended file or the file has moved to cloud. When you move files to cloud, this has to be done proactively. Very, very important. Another very, very powerful tool which nobody even knows about is called Inquire. If you are an auditor, if you are a finance person working with complex files, you desperately need Inquire. You may or may not have it in your menu. If you don't have it in the menu, go to File, Options, Add-ins, In, Add-ins, go to, sorry, not these add-ins, you have to go to Com Add-ins, the second option. So Add-ins, open the drop-down, Com Add-ins, go, and here you should enable Inquire. While we are at also enable power map and power pivot. Very, very useful things. Don't enable power view that is dedicated. So once you do that, what does this do? It does some brilliant things. It gives you comparison between files. However complex the file is, it gives you a comparison. It also gives you extensive information about the file. It's called workbook analysis. It gives you 300 different parameters about each file. How many data points, how many formulas, how many hidden sheets, how many cells which are not being used anywhere, 
how many formulas having errors it's a very very good tool other thing you have an old file and a revised file it is extremely brilliant at comparing files at formula level structural change level as well as formatting level another common problem long lasting files have too much formatting and then suddenly it says i can't do any formatting that's called excess formatting one click will get rid of that and very useful workbook relationships to find link files recursively normally when you go to edit links dialogs you know the immediate relations who will find the relations relation that is also done here so it's a very powerful tool then large and slow files what is the sop why do become files become large because data is large so the idea is do not keep data in excel sheet use data model which is the power pivot which i mentioned about data model because excel sheet becomes slow so we have to have 500000 rows typically depending on the machine but once you put it in data model with the same hardware you will have much better performance and file size will reduce and you will get many many more features one of the benefit of that is you can now use relationships instead of we lookups for decoding so you have code and description code is in the transaction file description is in master data that kind of thing we need we look up which makes it even more slow so that can be done using relationships and data model finally we have many new functions we don't look them at all so many new functions have been added over the years in fact vijay is going to tell you more about them very soon so make sure not only do you know about the functions but you should retrofit them wherever required the simplest and the lowest hanging fruit is replace we look up with x look up but that itself will improve the performance so very very powerful functions recently let and lambda these are revolutionary changes to excel they are not just new functions added they just change the way you work and many of you may or may not be knowing about array formulas which was always a cryptic so called super advanced topic now everyone can use array formulas without knowing which are array formulas that's another empowerment so that's that now the last part i want to talk about is analytical inefficiency but before i go there any comments or thoughts from vijay or joydeep from whatever i'm saying yep Uh, thank you doc so um, you mentioned a lot about inefficiency and how long it takes for us to do certain uh, you know um, tasks and transactions yeah. so the way i look at it in my daily day to day job uh, if something takes more than 15 minutes to prepare hmm. then i'm i am inefficient so <laughs> that that's my benchmark for my team you know most of the st- of the of the work that people do um, are basically taking data from you know various places so you take data from various places put them into a certain place do yeah. some transformations and then you you got this beautiful excel file now that the the creation of that should not take more than 15 minutes if it takes more than 15 minutes then there is definitely some scope for improving efficiency that's my two cents over there Sure, sure. And, Vijay? Yeah, and yeah. of course, if I, if, if I can add to it one, sorry, if I can add sure, to sure. that one, uh, one more time, one more thing. See, with Power Query and putting data into your data model, you have this beautiful functionality that you know every month we, most of our, many of our financial reports, you know, you have January, February, March, and every month as you go along, you keep adding more and more data. Let's take a simple case of P and L, right? Yeah. you've got maybe um, like in our case we probably have about half a million transactions coming in every month now those half a million transactions have to go in at below the bottom of that of the previous data set or you know multiple data sets where we have now if you want all that you have to do is to just take this data into a csv file or put it into uh, into a folder go open your excel sheet just click refresh and you're done yeah. it's it's that simple absolutely yeah so yeah. that's what uh, yeah. that's the power of power query really yeah
Yes, absolutely right. Like for me, like I'm using like Excel for last 22 years. And for me also, like I'll say that the Power Query is one of the best uh, ever, like the most powerful feature ever introduced by Microsoft. So earlier, like if I say that uh, earlier it was maybe uh, the pivot table. So it was so easy in the same way, like now, nowadays, like the data volume has extent uh, like in uh, like anything. So now to play with the data. So when we are going to have millions of rows, so Excel can handle. So now maybe like earlier we used to do access. So uh, after this power query, I believe that, OK, uh, like whatever things actually we used to do in access, those things actually we can do in a user friendly way with the help of Excel. So that's the power of Power Query and the new functions, this dynamic arrays, you know, uh, Excel 365, those are amazing. So if someone like he's good in like old formula and new formula, if they are going to put like together, then really we can do wonders. And that's those things actually I'm going to discuss a little bit uh, when uh, my turn will be there. Yes, doctor. Sure, very nice. So I'm going to hand over to you in another few mm -hmm. minutes. Mm -hmm. So the last thing I want to talk about so far, we talked about operational inefficiency agreed. So output is same, but the process time is suddenly reduced and quality and accuracy has improved, which is good. But there is another kind of inefficiency called analytical inefficiency. And let's look at that. The idea is what exactly is analytics? And that is something which is again ambiguous. So I'm just going to show you something. Whenever we have data, what do we do? We get the data, we clean it up and we analyze it. Yes, we know that. But exactly what does that mean and what does that entail? That is the question I am putting forward. So example quickly and then we will move on. So if there is data, how many reports to create in the data who decides? Suppose I have lots of data and. Uh, as an example, I have this data with some columns or rows. How many reports boss decides? Yeah, OK, government decides, customer decides, someone asks, someone delivers. Done. But are we doing a right job there? Are we asking all the questions? That's the question. So what is analysis? Learn from the past because historical data, right? So learn useful things and then what do you do with them? You try to use that knowledge to try and improve the future. That's the concept, simple. But how many? useful things. That's the problem. So four reports, 12 reports. Hey, someone asked for 14th report, I'll give it. But if nobody asks, then that 14th thing, which is equally useful, is just lying there, nobody noticing. That's called loss of opportunity. So don't stop generating reports or looking at useful things when someone stops asking for reports. That's the concept. So what should we say? Not 412, no number all possible useful things and that is something which is actually implemented in Excel as well as Power BI. So a quick demo of that. One thing is we never look at our data in a geographical way. So if you have data with locations, remember to do this. Insert 3D map. It actually draws a map instantly. No lat longs required. This is available for last, I don't know, 10 years maybe. Eight years, I forgot. But many people have not noticed that button. So you just go there. This is your data being analyzed live and this is completely interactive. Entire world is in fact if it's shop floor, you can have your custom image with this also done and this can be animated and used for storytelling. So look at maps. That's number one. Second, if I say I want to learn all possible useful things, how many pivot tables will I make? OK, I will make more agreed, but how many? So I don't have unlimited time. So this is another very powerful new feature. This requires the Office Pro Plus version because it requires the AI infrastructure of Microsoft, which is on Azure. You don't pay anything extra. It's a part of Excel. So it looks at the data, analyzes the data and actually gives you reports. It doesn't ask you what you want. It tells you what the AI thinks is significant. You should look at all of them. Maybe some of that you already know. Maybe some of it you already don't know. That gives you ideas to manage the stuff. And going beyond that, make it mandatory for every report which you show in Excel or PowerPoint in the review. Make sure people import the same data in Power BI. Just bring the empty Power BI file, no dashboard. 
Why? Because here you can ask questions. So in Power BI, there is QA, a primitive version of that is also there in Excel, where you can actually type questions and get answers. So I'm going to ask a question. Top three city by average amount. And it actually gives me this. And I can actually see it as a table or a map or whatever I like. So this is extremely powerful. This understands a very, very complex set of language elements. You may not be even aware. Even those people who use the QA are not aware of how powerful this is. So it understands aggregates, conjunctions. It understands relative dates, equality, and even things like names, you can create synonyms. So the field name may be amount, but boss calls it revenue. You can define those things as well. So it's really, really powerful. And the last thing is this has AI built in. So for example, this is a PowerPoint and I'm showing there is a decrease in revenue. Obviously someone is going to ask you why. So don't say I will get back to you. Right click there, analyze and ask Power BI to explain the decrease. They look at all your data, rank them in order of influence, and actually show this to your life. So this shows you a nice waterfall chart, shows you that state is the biggest influencer. Next one is gender, next one is type of expense, and so on and so forth. So this is a live implementation of the thought process, which is learn all possible useful things. So these are best practices which I wanted to highlight. Now let's see applied knowledge of this type in action with Vijay. So over to you Vijay. You can share Thank your you. screen and start. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. So really uh, it's a great uh, to see like uh, in a quick time like you showed a lot of new things and at least uh, like I'm sure that uh, like uh, all of us got a good idea that okay such type of possibilities are there so obviously like we have to spend time and definitely like we have to do practice but at least now we know that okay such type of things are available uh, in excel or through power bi so uh, let me uh, share my screen sure so one of the things uh, i'm sure joydeep will add to it more many people don't even know there is power bi and it's surprising because it's free Many IT people have that problem that I have to pay something to Microsoft. No, that comes later. The Power BI desktop is free for life with no constraints. So Jaydeep has been a very, very early proponent and a very successful implementation of Power BI within his team. You want to expand on that, Jaydeep? Oh yes. So we've we've done quite a few of these Power BI. Uh, implementations in our team. We started with, you know, on on this journey uh, a couple of years ago, about three, four years ago, when Power BI was overtaking its nearest competitor. Power BI used to be second, second, you know, in the Gartner Magic Quadrant, and then about three, four yeah. years ago, they started overtaking the rest of the team. And now, the you, if you look at the Gartner Magic Quadrant, uh, which came out on the 15th of February, they are they are far ahead of the of everybody else. So. So what we have done in Power BI is that uh, you know, Doc, you you spoke about importing data, and many of us think that if large amounts of data are there in in your in your data model, your model will become slow. Now I have read blogs where people say that they've put 25, 30 million rows and it it works absolutely fine, but I myself have put in about four, five million rows. And my dashboards and my Power BI models work absolutely fine. Great. If it does not really, Microsoft has also recently, a couple of months ago, in one of their monthly releases, they came up end of last year, I think. They came up with a feature where, if you're, you know, they came up with some efficiency features, and you could find out in your data model if which part of your data model was slowing, you know, slowing down the system. Right. So. A, and Doc, I think you will know that better and you could maybe expand on it, but that is a fantastic feature. And even uh, in the Microsoft blog, sometime in February, early February, there was a blog on how you can improve your data model also. Yeah. So, yeah. so once your data model starts becoming very big, you have to think in terms of efficiencies and improvement of that model. But otherwise, you know, 
um, Power BI and Excel is a is a fantastic feature. Great, thanks, Jay. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, uh, right, uh, Joy. So, uh, uh, friends, uh, what now? Uh, like, I'm going to show you. So, being a like finance person, uh, I'm a chartered accountant. So, more than 20 years, like I spent uh, uh, time uh, in uh, big MNCs or Indian MNCs. So, there, like. Uh, I like found that people are facing a lot of problems like uh, whatever uh, every month they are generating reports and one of the report which every organization, every business like they uh, need that is the like financial uh, reporting. So every month like the company wants that okay what are the results like uh, where the company is there and sometimes like when the company is big they are having operation in different branches they are having like their operations uh, uh, maybe in different countries so then uh, like it's not only the country or single branch so at head office or at corporate level so the people wants to see what is the overall picture what is the comparison what what is the actuals what are the budgets and like that there are so many things actually they want to analyze and for doing this I have found that okay, each and every branch like they are having different accountants. They are making report for that particular branch and in a different uh, manner. And then they are sending the reports to the head office or corporate office. Am I right, Joy? Uh, like such type of things like generally uh, uh, like uh, companies uh, like they do. And then in corporate office, yes. they are ha having a, a like a separate section who are consolidating the data like whatever they have done and then they are facing the problem that okay at a particular branch or particular uh, like country they have created report in a different manner and the other one they have done in a different manner maybe the gl accounts whatever they have used so those are grouped in a different manner so it's not a apple to apple comparison and then there are questions and then again like editing and all those type of things so such type of things and it uh, like uh, people are spending like uh, uh, nights or weekends and every time like they say uh, like uh, being a chartered accountant people say yeah uh, like we are having a uh, late sitting so why so you know like in finance you know uh, everyone is uh, doing late sitting so on uh, like financial uh, this reporting so maybe month end or maybe start of the month so every month uh, like saturday sunday we spend on the uh, like company only so those type of things actually we can avoid if we are going to use Excel in a smart way, in a uh, like a better way and how we can use those things. So just I have created one demo. So in this demo, I'm going to show you that, okay, how to create a dashboard and by using this new formula, now it is more simpler and more powerful. So here, like what I have done, so I'm having a database and in this database, Right now, I'm having only single company. That is the uh, dummy, uh, like this company I've given, Champ Excel name. And the data can be actual, data can be budget, that data can be forecast. And there can be multiple countries. So right now, I'm having data for 10 countries. So right now, I'm having this data. So this data, we can extract, uh, like this data, can we can extract through Power Query also. Maybe you are having your trial balance downloaded from SAP or from Oracle and you are putting your data in a uh, folder. And from that folder, we can uh, like automatically like extract the data, whatever we needed, whatever columns we need. So suppose uh, by using Power Query, we have extracted data and this data is giving us that okay, we are having different, different countries and different months like we are having this data. Uh, April to March 2019 financial year Indian financial year April 2000 uh, April to March and this amount is in local currency those local currencies like maybe when I'm talking about Canada so this is the Canadian currency and if I'm talking about uh, this uh, uh, Germany so that is the German currency and if I'm talking about USA that is the uh, like dollar so all those type of things like if now I want to uh, create some financial reports that okay, I want to analyze the data and the data, maybe I want to see quarter wise, maybe I want to see YTD, maybe I want to see only for the month and comparison also. So how to do all those things? So these blue columns, so those are my like the only data which actually I'm extracting from my ERP. 
and now i have done a little uh, like smart use of excel so what is the smart use of excel i have done i have created like few masters only so these masters like i have given that okay i am having these 10 countries and which region this country belongs to so i have given that okay these five countries belongs to asia and this is europe and this is america and here i have given all and this is the worldwide so that i want to see the report for all also and these are the currencies which we are having like for each country and also like uh, so now by using uh, this excel automatically i can create uh, like this dashboard uh, like how uh, this is going to work so here this is my front page in this cover page i can choose parameters here so here i can give the parameters from which month i want to see my report so whether i want to see jan to march or i want to see only for jan so i can uh, select here so this is giving me jan to jan and if i am going to select this december 18 so if it is giving me error in date because from date is uh, like later than the uh, end date so that can't be can't uh, be happen so here i am selecting like jan to jan so here i can also select that okay which currency i want to see my reports so whether i want to see for uh, like usd or i want to see reports in inr like for each uh, like country and then place value also so i have used that okay absolute value thousands lakhs millions or anything like uh, we can do as per our requirement so once i have selected the parameters okay then if i want to see that okay what is the my dashboard so here in dashboard uh, like i have created a dashboard uh, with the use of my this data that is my database that is the company name my type a uh, uh, country month and gl coding so here with the help of this master like i have used this x lookup so it is automatically uh, getting me currency like suppose if i am going to change this uh, country like my data is going to be india so automatically this currency is going to change aina and the currency conversion rate is also going to change uh, based on that right so here uh, in this master i have defined all those things and also like i have defined that okay in case of absolute i have to divide by 1000 in case of i have to divide by 1000 like that so now i am having this gl master so here in this gl master i have created that okay my each gl accounts like which group they belong to so one group i have given that that is the major group like then i can also have the sub grouping so but my reportings which i have to do that is in the this grouping level but maybe uh, by using this if conditions like some different conditions so maybe i can have three type of groupings five type of groupings one groupings maybe for ifr basis one maybe for the uh, like the management reporting one maybe taxation groupings so all those type of groupings i have to uh, i can do here so here i am having this currency master so in this currency master only once i have to define whatever months what are the rates uh, for the currencies are there and this also friends like if we are going to automate through power query like as doctor uh, told us that okay by using this power query from web also we can extract the data so these currency currency rates also automatically we can extract from uh, through power query so once i am going to have this data so based on this data it is based on the parameters whatever parameters i am going to select so this is going to give me the results right friends so here like if uh, you are going to see in this dashboard so here i can select that okay i want to see worldwide or only for asia or europe or america so when i am using this uh, like this so here it is showing me all the countries those are india china singapore all 10 countries and the all is also there but if i am going to change here asia so you will see here automatically it is changing to all and then these countries are only related to india china singapore uae so earlier you know before excel 365 this was a very uh, like uh, uh, very uh, tough to create such type of dependent validations but by using excel 365 it is very very easy and it is dynamic like it is if i am going to change my data like suppose if i am going to have my database and in that database and here if you see i can select the report 
for China. What is the my dashboard here? I am sure it is showing me report month January previous month. Automatically it is taking the previous month and this is showing me Jan to Jan. And suppose if I'm going to change my uh, reporting here and if I say that, OK, instead of Jan, I want to see my report Jan to March. So automatically you will see and uh, INR absolute and if I'm going to see here, so this is report for Jan to March and it is going to give me report. This is Jan to March and this is for the last three months. So those type of reportings actually we can do automatically. If you see here like this is the actual reporting and Jan to March. So by using this E date formula and yeah, like so one month like behind I'm uh, converting it and based on this like my formulas are also automatically calculating and here like I have I have done this key matrix. So if I want to change these key matrix that OK, I want to see like some uh, different key matrix. So I can go change click to change key matrix whether I want to see total revenue. So if I'm saying that OK, I want to see total revenue. So this is changed to total revenue. If I say that OK, uh, in case of here, I want to see instead of selling expenses, I want total expenses or maybe uh, I want to see only rent. So here if I go, so it is going to show me that OK, what is the expense of rent for Asia and for China? And uh, like how Excel 365 is going to help us. So in that case, friends, like you'll see here, uh, here I have also uh, made a control earlier. What I used to uh, like had a problem. So when uh, if my country is going to change, some GL account is a uh, new GL account is going to change. So I was uh, not aware that OK, some GL account is there and I have to update the master, but I have created one controls. So here if you see new country, no new country, new GL account, no is currency master updated currency name. So if suppose let's see the beauty. If I'm going to say that here that OK, I'm going to have some new uh, country. So uh, I have selected that OK, I'm going to have Russia. So this is the Russia. So automatically because this Russia is there, here is error, but maybe right now it is in front. But maybe in uh, like below also I'm going to have some uh, like other country also. So here I say that OK, Africa is there. Now if I want to see that OK in Africa and I'm here in front, if I go to my control seat, so it is showing me new country. Those are Russia and Africa, which is not part of uh, like master. So what I have to do, I have to go here uh, in this my master and here I have to give that OK where my this Russia is going to have and where this uh, I'm going to have the uh, this uh, controls here. You see Russia has gone now. So here uh, like Africa. So if I'm going to put here that OK, Africa is there. So then I have to tell that OK, which region uh, like this is going to have. So I say that OK, Russia is uh, part of Europe. OK, and some new region also if I want to make that OK, Africa. So that I say that OK, Africa region. OK, and I say that OK, currency also here something uh, like pound and here in Africa also some ABC currency like if I say that OK, I want to have ABC currency. So you'll see that first thing like in dashboard if I go here. So here when I go here, so you see worldwide Asia, Europe, America and Africa region automatically it came. Earlier it was not possible because of Excel 365 it is possible. So now if I'm going to select this Africa region, so because Africa region is there, China is there, it is not possible. So all is there and if I'm going to select Africa, so if Africa data will be there, so then uh, like uh, it, will, it will show me. But now let's see the control. So here in control, new country, nothing is there. New GL account, no new GL. Is currency master updated? Yes, no updated. April 18 currency name ABC. That is not part of currency master. So here like it is showing me that for April month because in our database I change my uh, this here. If I go here and if I say that OK Africa, so you'll see that reporting currency is not there. That's why it is showing error. And if I'm going to create this master here and if I say there uh, go here and I say that OK one currency master. Let's see uh, whatever the uh, I'm having this high currency. Let's copy it and just I can put here 
10, 20, uh, 10, 11, whatever if I want. So those type of currency uh, automatically it is. Uh, I have given this 1% it is increasing. So now if I go here, uh, my controls. So here, uh, let's see April 18 and this ABC. So here ABC is there uh, because I have given thigh and thigh. So I have to change the name of currency ABC. Now, if I go to my controls, so no new currency month, no new currency. Automatically my database, so it got the currency rates and the data is changed. And now if I'm going to see uh, this uh, report, so this is January to March 19 reporting. So here the values are zero because I am selecting April 18 because my database, I have changed only few things and those things are only uh, like this April 18 and you'll see here only the balance sheet items are there. So uh, if even if I'm going to change here in this dashboard, uh, like I say that, okay, here uh, I say that, okay, April 18 to March 19. So still in dashboard, it is it will show me zero. Why zero? Because in my database, the GL codes, so those GL codes are related to uh, like balance sheet. So suppose if uh, I'm going to take some GL codes which are related to expenses. So let's say I'm going to take these GL accounts. And if I'm going to change here only the G GL accounts, right? Now, if I'm going to buy dashboard, so you see automatically it is showing me whatever the groupings are there that, okay, these are the expensive traveling and convenience, communication and internet, and it is showing me the result according to that like particular uh, like thing. So it is very, very handy. Like such type of automations I have done only once. So now I can handle multiple currencies, current, uh, countries, multiple currencies, and it is very, very easy. And if I want to see like the balance sheet also, so uh, because right now I have changed the data, so it has changed uh, like something. Uh, so if le let me do control Z, so automatically uh, let me have my original data. So those are the this Africa, Russia I have deleted. So just uh, I wanted to uh, like tell you that okay, what type of things uh, we can do here. So this is the. Uh, earlier whatever I was having. So now I can go to my balance sheet. So PNL account also. Here it is giving me India, China, Singapore, UAE, all the countries and I can see the report Jan to March and currency, uh, all the details. Then the balance sheet also, it is showing me that okay, uh, like the what is the balance sheet. Depending everything on the database, only anything, uh, everything on the uh, this uh, uh, masters only. Sometimes like if I want to see that, okay, I don't have this actual data. I want to have this uh, like uh, this uh, budget data also. So that also I can uh, do right now. I am having this actual only and let's change to budget here. So I say that, okay, I'm going to have this budget and let's see everything I have changed to budget. Now, if I go to my balance sheet, what happened? Everything gone. That is PL, that is everything gone because there is no actual. But if I can put here that, okay, I want to see budget data. Automatically budget is coming and if actual is there, so if I'm going to have some data with budget, some data if I'm going to have for actual also, so automatically. And if new country is going to have, so whether if I'm going to have this data, everything if I'm going to put India, so uh, here because actual is there. So if I'm going to put here budget, so this number and this number will be same. So in future, whenever if I'm going to have some new country, so uh, I was saying that, okay, if I'm going to have some new country and that is Africa. So first I have to uh, see that, okay, currency is updated and everything is updated. So just I have to go here and I have to change here to Africa and immediately I'm going to have the data and I'm going to have the updates. So this type of thing, this type of automations, if I'm going to have, then really it is going to uh, give me a lot of uh, like time saving, lot of uh, uh, like uh, I can analyze the data in different way. So all those things like I can do. So I'm sure uh, you uh, like the things actually the dashboard uh, which I have created here and automatically it is uh, like changing. 
so new uh, this europe is there so only the countries for europe so this is the germany and if i am going to yeah. change here the currency also so you see i am going to have this usd immediately everything is amount in usd absolute and currency rate those, those conversion are for with the help of the months with the help of this currency master everything is changing immediately so Vijay, uh, Vijay. yes uh, show some example of where you are using one of the new functions so that we can understand the mechanics okay. behind the scenes kya ho raha hai okay okay so here like uh, you see i am having this uh, my country okay here i want to make some region that okay what are all are the regions here there auto uh, automatically it is uh, like having so suppose if i am going to have my uh, this africa is also there and if i say that okay this is going to have africa region and the currency here i am going to put abc so how uh, this is uh, changing so here uh, like i am uh, going to use this filter uh, like function so i have used this filter function and i said that okay i want to have the unique values so unique values how this filter function is going to work so i said that okay i want to this this is the uh, this filter i want to do the filter uh, here and uh, first uh, let's do i want to have here unique value and here i have selected this put enter so automatically it is giving me if asia is five times it is giving me only one time but the thing is i have given some like extra range here so here it is having the zero also so what i have put before that i have put here filter and i said that okay whatever the unique value is going to come so i want to have those are not equal to blank now automatically it is giving me uh, like whatever the things if i am going to have uh, some uh, new region so if i say that okay australia and here if i say that okay that is uh, going to part of some xyz uh, this continent and here uh, like aus currency so automatically you see xyz is there but if i say that okay that is going to part of asia so that is gone and this is there and how uh, this i am using this in the uh, my this dashboard so there data validation validation is there so if i go here and i put data validation so in data validation earlier there was issue in list i had to give the source that okay what is the source but here my source is changing like sometimes there are four rows sometimes there may be 10 rows sometimes may there may be two rows so here there is a very great functionality what i can do when i am going to select this like this so instead of that i should select only x16 and put hash key so when i am going to put this hash key so whenever i am going to change something so it is going to uh, like i am going to have all the five so if i am going to say that okay i am going to have only asia region here so here i am having asia only and if now if i go here my this uh, box so automatically it is going to show me worldwide and asia only got my point doctor yeah yeah very nice so here in the same way like once i have uh, done this in the same way what i have done based on this region so i am getting this my uh, country names also here also i have used this filter formula so in case of filter formula what here i am saying if my j1 j1 uh, is uh, that is hi j1 that is europe so this is coming from dashboard e6 so if i go here dashboard e6 instead of there if i put here asia so right now it is showing me all the asian countries so how it is working if i go to master so here i am putting that this is getting from asia uh, like dashboard e6 so here i have given this excel 365 formula what i am saying if there is worldwide so i want to filter all the countries like i want to have all the countries so i said that okay filter a22 a15 which are not blank so it is going to give me all the countries so suppose if i am going to change here instead of asia if worldwide if i am going to put so automatically it is giving me all the countries but 
that time I am going to change it to Asia. So immediately it is going to give in this master only related to countries with which are related to Asia and all is always there. So because I have put here a filter and I put here filter in case of filter A2 to A15 and B2 to B15 equal to J1. That is the J1 plus I have also put a filter B2 to B15 worldwide that I want the worldwide also. So what it is giving me all the countries which are part of worldwide that is all okay and only for Asia. So it is giving me all uh, this some uh, all these things. If I'm going to change here to Europe, you see. So immediately it is giving me only all and India. So that is the uh, like beauty. I have to control only master. Everything will go uh, like uh, with my uh, database and everything. So any number of countries I can handle, any number of years data I can handle. So just I have to extract data. I have to put here and I, I have to play with the data. Just I, I can change the ranges here, currency here and analyze the data. So that's all uh, like we can do uh, by using this uh, smart use of Excel. Very nice. So, so Jaydeep, uh, any comments? Yeah. So that's uh, like from my side and friends like uh, what uh, right now because of that time constraint, like we are having uh, like a lot of uh, these type of things if really you want to learn. So uh, like uh, with the bless blessings of the doctor, so I'm going to have uh, one uh, like this uh, session, uh, how to do this MIS automation, how this template has been created, like what are all the functions. So for that, I'm going to have two days webinar next week. So those uh, like details I'll provide you later. So next week, Saturday and Sunday, five hour session is there. 2.5 hours on Saturday and two and a half hour on Sunday. So we are going to discuss all the new formulas. We are going to discuss how to create such type of MIS, how to create, create such type of dashboard. So uh, Mr. Uh, uh, like Joy, so would you like to uh, uh, give some comments uh, like how you find it and uh, like in your organization also like how the things are moving so how uh, it is going to help no I, I think this is this is what what you've shown here is wonderful it's 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 absolutely wonderful uh again i did see some comments in you know in the chat window that uh, how do we get to learn this and so my two cents over there is that learning this is an is a task it's an uphill task it cannot be done in one or two hours and vijay i know you're going to have a two sessions of what are they two and a half hours each yes but yes i ideally i think if you want to learn something like this just a dashboard like this it's it's two a two full day session uh, i have attended many many years ago one of these sessions which vijay was doing in the with the institute of chartered accountants of india in gurgaon right and something like this takes will take you at least two days to learn just learn at least if you are if you are a novice if if you know all these formulas then of course you can probably build it yourself and uh, i have people in my team who regularly build these kind of dashboards they have also now moved on to doing the same thing in power bi where you get far more beautiful visualizations also what you see over here on the screen is in excel so but all of us, we we all have that ability to do it either in Excel or in Power BI. We can. It's just a matter of learning it. And once you learn it, um, I mean, trust me, life is a breeze after that. Exactly. Yes, doctor. Hey. So anything uh, like uh, you want to comment? So some question like uh, your question was good. So how we are going to use this uh, like new functionality of uh, this Office 365? So that's great. And one of the functions is XLOOKUP. That's also going to play a very great role. Earlier, what uh, happened? So when I'm going to have this country name and this region, if somehow, if I'm going to create some uh, like column here, so my uh, like all the reports, so that will go haywire, right? Any, anything like it will go haywire. So uh, because I have given in VLOOKUP, that is the third column. That is the fifth column. So in case of my database, when I go, but here by using this XLOOKUP, so you see and everything is intact. 
So whether that is in left side or right side or fifth column or seventh column, everything it is taken care automatically. So those type of things like in uh, with XLOOKUP and the filter is very great function, unique, sort function is there. And by using all these functions together, so then uh, like I know, like I, I am using Excel. So, so many problems actually we used to face earlier. But nowadays, those type of things just a very, very quick, uh, very easy uh, to do such type of automations. So uh, that's uh, uh, like from all from my side, like uh, with time also, like we are going to have some query session also, and I'm sure uh, Joy also uh, want to share some best practice uh, uh, also uh, something. And so now yeah. uh, it's over to uh, Joy. No, and see another thing I did see some, um, did see a comment in the chat window about a 32 bit uh, Excel. So my personal experience is that just forget about 32 bit, always go for the 64 bit. Uh, in many companies, the IT departments, the IT teams try to give you a 32 bit. Uh, from a cost perspective, they both cost the same. Uh, so uh, always try to use 64 bit. Otherwise, when you're using large data sets, you're going to get into trouble. And you're going to see very, very, very funny, freakish, errors happening and you'll never be able to know why it is happening. And this used to happen to us. I'm talking about about eight, 10 years ago. This used to happen to us quite a bit. And then when we moved over to 64 bit, they all went away. Even uh, even things like Excel crashing all of a sudden, you know, you have a, a, a 60 MB file or an 100 MB file and it all of a sudden crashes. Now that with if you start using 64 bit, it will all go away. Over to you, Doc. Anything? Yeah, so let's take some questions as well. So there's a question on RAM. How much RAM is required for 50 MB files? A normal laptop with an 8 GB RAM should be good enough. Yeah, yeah. 16 is definitely better. 16, 16 GB is better. But definitely but, uh, better. Yeah. Like Joy said, what is the absolute mandatory thing people should do in Excel, irrespective of what else you are doing in life? Let me just explain that first, which yes. Joy already said, but it's so important. We need to talk about it once more because there may be some people from IT in this call. So this is specifically for IT people. What am I talking about? I am saying that uh, just give me a second to bring out that slide. From an IT perspective, what is absolutely necessary is always use 64 bit. For Excel, there is no role to play. All the windows you have is anyway 64 bit. Unfortunately, worldwide, IT people end up installing 32 bit version of Office for no apparent reason. There is no extra license fee to be paid. When you have Excel, you have both versions already paid for. So there is no cost at all. And just to add to that, because maybe there are IT people, they can learn from this directly. If you are not from IT, you should go and at least show this part of the session to IT because IT should be an enabler, not a disabler. And I am very proudly wanting to say this, that look at the way Joydeep is articulating this. Many of the things he said a typical finance person doesn't know. He has explored technology on his own and he has made sure he's in sync with IT. But very often what happens, people in finance are not IT savvy and then they are left to what IT gives them and then there is a disconnect. So make sure if you are from IT, always get the next new version. In fact, if you have the Office Pro Plus version, it's always latest. And the other part is add-ins. Many people are asking how to enable power query, how to enable power. It's just an add in two checkboxes which can be enabled across the organization using group policy. That's another thing IT never does. Another important common problem, even if you have Office Pro Plus, the, late, the refresh cycle is six months by default. That's bad because nowadays every week new features are added. So why not give that benefit? Microsoft is not charging you extra for the features. Deliver them. Just change the frequency of refresh to monthly. Similarly, another very, very important thing like 
both of them have been talking about getting data importing data why deliver a csv because the moment you deliver a csv three people download it at three different points of time then the new csv comes someone forgets to update it that's a problem so using power bi data sets you can actually make instead of csv stop giving people csv dumps then what should you give you go to data get data there is power bi there and once you do that whatever you are delivering as csv can now be delivered as clean certified data sets that's the job it should be doing and the important thing it should be also doing is tell people about power bi whatever we have shown in the power bi desktop part is free there is no license cost get the business value first then how much business cost are we talking about if you have the latest version of excel plus power bi it's some 14 dollars per month the amount of time you will save per desktop in just that copy paste and data cleanup and the additional quality improvement and accuracy will justify that cost and you will get break even in 3 days of work and finally many people are still sending excel files to each other as attachments and then the attachments are coming as copies and people are copy pasting that can be eliminated by enabling external sharing so that people send links to excel files instead of physical excel files so these are the best practices for it anything you want to add uh, from an it collaboration perspective joy no i think I'll, i'll let me add something from my experience what we have done um, over and above this so in many cases uh, you know you have these uh, um, you have your either your saps or the oracles the erps of the world and you have to log into the system in order to be able to get the data uh, many a times it will not due to group policies they will not allow you to connect directly you know into their databases because right. that it, <clears throat> because of security reasons and very validly so they will not allow you to do that and many times for example um, just to give you an example let's say i mean I, i'm i'm just trying to think of an external example okay so there is one person in who in our team for example his job is to come in the morning and he has to log into various banks in different parts of the world he downloads the data from these banks as to basically it's basically the collection data he downloads the bank statements from all these banks and then he he looks at all the collections that have happened and he puts them into the erp that's his, that's basically his job now all that today is being taken over by robots right you can right. you can implement rpas you know over you know in in all these processes now in our uh, financial uh, financial analytics and fpna processes uh, many of us you know we prepare reports so we get data from various sources we go go there pull it pull it and then put it into a certain place and as, as i said anything that takes over 15 minutes is obviously you're not you, you know you're inefficient and there's scope for efficiency over there because if you're logging into a system just pulling a data and dumping it into a folder how long should that take not more than 2 3 minutes sure so even in our case we said that even this 10 15 minutes that we were doing every day is 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 a waste of time so how do we go about how do we go about solving this so we looked Correct. at the rpa landscape and we said that and it, obviously we would have had to buy a robot right uh, so it was it would be some rpa application which we we could have learned and implemented it ourselves but then there is a cost attached to it which is somewhere between 5 to 20000 dollars depending upon which application you choose it, the, and that's a recurring cost every year so we said is there a free method of doing it and we have been able to do it free of cost what we did was we use Win- windows scheduler to schedule a python script so one of my accountants he's a chartered accountant by profession he learned python on his own he built a python script using selenium with Py- with a combination of python and selenium coding he was able to and using windows scheduler so windows scheduler basically at certain points in time it just kicks off Correct. tells the python script to run goes picks it up dumps it right, right. dumps it into a database in, into sure. a folder into a folder then your files automatically refresh and by that process we have files that get refreshed every 4 hours so you like you get the latest and greatest data which is all automated and that again we've been able to do it free of cost 
Very nice. So let's take some questions now. And in the meantime, uh, uh, many people are interested in Vijay's course next week. So can you share that uh, detail, please? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going to share. Yeah. And in the meantime, we will take questions as well. So yeah, I will go through the questions. Uh, I'll read out the questions aloud, and any of us can then answer those questions. Uh, friends, so we can, you can visit uh, my website, uh, this champexcel.com, and there, like we are having these trainings, business automations, dashboard creation, big data analysis. So we are doing uh, work for uh, a lot of MNCs. Uh, so these are like a few of our clients for which, like, we are uh, doing work and. Uh, like the uh, their day's work, so now they are doing in minutes or uh, like sometimes like 95 percent, 99 percent of the time actually they are saving. So uh, like we are having uh, this DLF, HMELs, like Tupperware, uh, like so all those uh, like Bacardi. So we have done a lot of automations like there. So now uh, like these are the uh, like my. Uh, email IDs and website is champexcel.com. YouTube channel is also there. There also we are sharing a lot of contents every week. Every Saturday we are having one query session. So those, that is free of cost and YouTube live is there. So today also we are going to have that query session. So all those details are available uh, if you are going to subscribe our this uh, YouTube channel champexcel. And regarding this upcoming webinar, MIS automations. So we are going to discuss the dashboard which I have discussed today, like I have shown you today. So how to make such type of dashboard? And apart from this dashboard, we are going to discuss new functions of Excel 365 in detail. That is the filter function is there, unique function is there, XLOOKUP is there, and the sequence function is there, and how those functions are going to change our day to day working like how uh, like those functions are going to give us a, a like great advantage uh, like how we are going to do our hours work in minutes or seconds so it is on 6th and 7th march the time will be in evening 6 30 to 9 pm so so that like the people like who are uh, like working so they uh, can also join and uh, like <coughs> so you can register on the champexcel.com so there the uh, today itself also today or, uh, or tomorrow any day like you can uh, like there and we are going to provide you uh, this dashboard uh, the file also working files also there and also the recordings also you are going to get there uh, like for 90 days so whatever uh, like we are going to get no, and I think as far as new features are concerned doc there is uh, there is uh, this uh, there are some videos that you've also posted on uh, on YouTube also, which has the new features, these new formulas of Excel. Is that right, Doc? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of information about these new features that are there. Right. And uh, you know, uh, we do have some time, do we, Doc? Or are we over time? Yeah, a couple of minutes more. Oh, okay, we are already okay, okay. over time by two minutes, but that's okay. Okay, okay, that's fine. No, I think I'll end over there because. Uh, uh, my my thoughts here is that you know I've been uh, in, you know looking at this space for the last 15 years in in very specific detail. Prior to that, I was more of a controller, more of a CFO type of person. But right. the last 15 years, I've been looking at analytics very specifically. And the last five years, at least, there's been a sea change in the amount of power that we as non-technical people, which means people who do not know coding. There's been a sea change in, in the power that we have we have right now from these tools. So my advice to everybody, there's tons of stuff that you can do. Please go and you know look into it. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks all of you for joining. It was a pleasure. See you next time. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you.